Hello and welcome to Economics Lectures. Today we are going to start our new subject, new series that is the introduction to econometrics. And uh, in the first lecture, lecture 1.1, we are going to define econometrics. Our learning objective in lecture 1 are, first of all, we are going to define econometrics. Then in the subsequent videos, we are going to discuss the basic statistical estimators like the arithmetic mean, median mode and the standard deviation. And we are going to discuss um, the properties of estimators used in econometrics. And then finally, we are going to discuss the hypothesis testing and its importance. Let us start with the definition of econometrics. Econometrics simply means measuring economics. And uh, I have collected here four definitions from various sources. The first definition is a science of testing economic data. Now, what is economic data? Basically, uh, we can say that, uh, for example, we have to check the relationship of student income, that is their pocket money and the consumption, the expenditure that they are making at canteens. So we want to test the relationship between these two variables. We collect data from the students and we use certain scientific methods to test this economic data. Now we know that if the student's income is higher, they will spend more money at, uh, on foods on, on, in canteen. They will spend more money on food. But the approach that we are going to use that should be scientific. And a scientific approach has certain properties. For example, an estimator that is scientifically uh, valid, it must be unbiased, it must be consistent and uh, as the sample size increases, it must be giving us the same results. So this is, uh, there, there are various properties and we are going to discuss those properties later on. But the point here is, the economic data that has been collected, it should be tested through certain scientifically approved methods. Now the second definition is the process of fitting a mathematical model on economic data. Again, we have collected the economic data. We are going to fit a mathematical model on this data. Mathematical model basically can have two forms. One is the graphical form on which we have uh, two axes, x axis and y axis and we show the relationship of two variables on these axes. For example, on x-axis, I take the income of student. On y-axis, I take the consumption of students and try to draw a line. And if that line is moving upwards, I would say that there is a positive relationship between income and consumption. And if there is a downward line, the line is decreasing over uh, as we increase the x-axis value, then we say that there is a negative relationship. So that is a graphical format. Then we have another format that is called uh, equation in the form of equation. And again, we have three types of equations for the set purpose. One is general equation. In general equation, we can only show that two variables are related. For example, we want to check the relationship of quantity, demand and price. We know that quantity demand is a function of price. It is related with price. But this format does not tell us anything about this relationship except that these two are related. Quantity demand depends on prices. Otherwise, we do not get any information from this equation. Then there is another form that is algebraic form in which we can write it as quantity demand as is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 P. This equation tells us that quantity demand and price are related and one 
and when price increase by one unit change in qd will be equal to beta 1 we know that there is a negative relationship between these two so we can rewrite it as qd is equal to beta naught minus beta 1p now it means that increasing price by one unit will decrease quantity demand by minus beta 1 units this tells us that the two variables are negatively related but again it does not tell us the magnitude the first form the general form tells us the variables are related but it does not tell us the direction of the relationship it does not tell us about the magnitude of the relationship the second form tells us the variables are related and it tells us the direction of the relationship as we have discussed it tells us that these two are negative related but it does not tell us about the magnitude of the relationship then we have a third form that is completely numerical form in which we also know the magnitude qd is equal to 50 minus 2p now what does this mean it means that if price increase by 1 rupee quantity demand will decrease by 2 units why because here it is mentioned uh, to us that the relationship is minus 2 when price increase by 1 rupee quantity demand will decrease by minus 2 so now we also know the magnitude of this relationship we can also predict the quantity demand given a certain price for example the price is 10 rupees then 2 multiplied by 10 gives us 20 and because of the negative sign we have minus 20 50 minus 20 will give us 30 so when the price is 10 quantity demand will be 30 it also tells us um, it gives us more detail as compared to the other two formats now move, moving on to the third definition that is a set of tools used for forecasting future values now this definition is slightly different from the previous two definitions in the sense that it tells us uh, it uh, in this case we are going to forecast future values and how we do that for example giving uh, using a very simple uh, analogy to cricket we have a 20 overs match a t20 match between any two countries pakistan or india pakistan sri lanka india bangladesh whatever the country it is a match of 20 overs and 10 overs have already been bowled in those 10 overs the score um, that a country has uh, obtained that is uh, let's say 100 so the team that is betting they have scored 100 runs out of 10 overs can you predict the score in 20 overs yes it is very easy the run rate here is 10 and in 20 overs they are going to score 200 right so this is forecasting future value and how we do that we are using historical data so that is what we see in the fourth definition the fourth definition is a science and arts using historical data for future policy recommendation again it's a science because the methods are scientific and arts arts basically means we are we know how to use the appropriate tools uh, which tool is to be used in certain scenario if we know that that is an art so it is a science and art using historical data for future policy recommendation now why policy recommendation let us discuss that as well again let us uh, look at the score in 10 overs they have scored 100 runs so this is historical data and using this historical data we are predicting the future values now let us say that the team that has scored this 100 runs they are betting second and the team that has uh, betted first they have 
uh, scored 220 runs. With this current run rate, they are not going to win the match because they require 221 and the score on the score that they can achieve with this current run rate that is 200. So using historical data, the previous score, they know that we are scoring less. The policy that this team will make is that uh, let's say uh, let us bring our uh, uh, hitters in onto the ground so that uh, let us bring those batsmen to the ground who have greater strike rate so that this run rate could be increased and uh, in order to win the match they definitely do require a higher run rate so they are now making a policy recommendation using the historical data right so these are the various definitions of economics and uh, what we summarize from these definitions basically we summarize two properties an econometrics uh, must have these two properties an econometric model or we can say the purpose of econometrics uh, can be classified into these uh, Two missions. The first is to find the causal relationship between two variables and the first two definitions do tell us about this causal relationship. A science of testing economic data that is when we are trying to find the relationship of income and consumption or we are trying to find the relationship of price with quantity demand that is we are trying to find causality between two variables and the second thing is forecasting forecasting is predicting future value with current or historical values so there is a, a time difference we are using uh, historical data for future uh, values for predicting future values so these are the two purposes uh, the main objectives of using econometrics in order to clarify causality and forecasting uh, I have I saw a picture on the social media and uh, I would like to share that here with you so let us see what this, that picture tells us so here is the forecasting stone and uh, you can see the condition in the forecast that is really funny when the stone is wet, it means that it is raining. When the stone is dry, it means that it is not raining. So you see how interesting is this forecasting. Basically, this is not forecasting. Why? Because we are predicting uh, the current situation with the current uh, conditions, with the current data. So this is causality, right? because if the stone is wet this is because of the rain if the stone is dry this is because there is no rain if there is shade on the ground this is caused by a sunny weather if there is white on the top this is caused by snowing so this relationship is not causality I'm sorry this is not forecasting but this is causality what is the import important ingredient for forecasting the most important ingredient is that there should be a difference in time we are going to forecast some values in the future with historic data there should be a time difference between these two so basically when we are forecasting we are using a time series type of data I mentioned forecasting uses historic values to predict the future values and it involves time series data we will discuss that type of data in detail but basically a time series data means that uh, we take uh, multiple time periods data for a single variable and uh, this type of data can be univariate a univariate data means for forecasting we can use a univariate that is single variable for example we are taking gdp data and we are forecasting future D gdp with that this is a univariate variable a multivariate forecasting um, means that 
we use multiple variables to forecast a single variable for example we are using we are forecasting the values of gdp for that purpose we are using the data of uh, gdp as well as the capital uh, used in that country as well as the labor the availability of land the education system the expenditures on development all those variables can be used to predict the gdp in the future so this type of analysis that is called multivariate analysis Causality, on the other hand simply means that one variable causes another variable and such type of analysis is, is usually multivariate multivariate meaning that more than one variables are included now there is another interesting concept that is causation versus correlation what is the difference between causation and correlation correlation means when one variable changes another variable changes but not because of each other for example if you take a data of a certain school uh, with students from class 0 up to class 5 or 6 and you collect the data of shoe size and uh, data of the student's height now it is uh, not surprising if you find that when the shoe size is small height of the student is small and the shoe size is greater height of the student is also greater does this means that shoe size causes height if students start wearing uh, higher uh, or bigger shoes will his height increase definitely not so this is correlation and uh, this correlation is occurring because of other common factor between these two that is age so the student's height depend on his age if his age is higher his height is going expected to be higher if his age is lower his height is expected to be lower so age causes height but shoe size and height they are correlated they does not cause each other right so the difference between causation is one variable causes another variable if one increase the other will increase because of the first variable in correlation if one variable increase the other will increase but not necessarily because of the first variable but because of certain common other factors now there is another case of by causation by causation means that variable x causes variable y but variable y also causes variable x for example if crime rate increase number of policemen hired in a certain city may also have increased and if crime rate decreases number of policemen in certain city may also be lower so which one causes the other one does the number of policemen causes the crime rate one can also argue that policemen are involved in corruption and therefore when there are more policemen involved in a city there is more uh, crime rate there is higher crime rate so that is also causation that is also possible and the reverse is also possible so this type of causation this is called by causation